You know, I have really struggled with the 1.5 question. Um, I've written quite a bit about it on my blog and sort of in the middle of it, you know, I, I went through all the different methods that people used uh, that I could find in all the different literature and looked up, you know, uh, estimates dating back a decade. Um, and the most recent one that I, I sort of concur with is to take the previous 10 years with the next 10 years as they're modeled and to, you know, derive an average temperature from that. Uh, which is actually the one that, you know, uh, Professor Mann kind of tried to use as well. And Zeke um, too. Yeah. So that's not a, there's, there's no official method out there, right? So we can't say it's anything in particular um, because one method is sort of as good as another right now. And, you know, that's distressing at a very gut level, you know. But actually, I, I don't know. I, actually, I, I think that's not a valid method. And let me give you an example. Let's say you have a thermometer in your house and it's really hot outside and you had the air conditioning on and you shut the air conditioning off and now you want to start measuring hour by hour what the temperature is. Then you're doing it, you're measuring very carefully, everything's going fine. And then someone opens all the windows and all the doors and then you keep making measurements. All of a sudden the temperature goes way up because the doors but are I open. Know, I know, I know the aerosol. I heard you, I heard you yeah. use the analogy before and that's a great- Why isn't that valid? You change them, but we don't. We don't have you know future estimates on the impact of the aerosol. We were, that's sort of equal guesswork to using modeling at this point. I mean, the future is kind of chaos uh, as far as that goes. No, we, we have data. No, no. That, so that, that, if we want to, if we, we did actually, it, we, we if did we it. actually want to make a statement about today, and I heard you use this before as as yet another methodology. Let's referred to to past La Nina's following this El Nino and take some sort of forward average. Well, I actually did that. I I went back um, and I, I did a 365 running uh, temperature in order to do this calculation rather than just sort of a day to day. And I saw if you take the 365 day running mean from the peak of an El Nino to a trough of a, of a subsequent La Nina, right, mm -hmm. was yep. 0.36 C. Uh, so I would be hard pressed to um, give us an absolute under. Um, okay, assuming we're at one point six four right now, right? Of one, an under of one point two eight is historically within you know the realm, even though almost certainly it won't go that low. Um, and also, you know, if you look sort of at those numbers, then that minimum happened three years after the max. So. Um, you know, at the very, at the, the worst case scenario, all right, the worst case mm -hmm. scenario is we're at 1.64, we go down to 1.28, you know, we take the median of those, which is 1.45, and that 1.45 is a year and a half from now, the midpoint between today and the trough of that La Nina. What so, do you mean by worst scenario? I, I, not really, I that's mean, the we're best definitely case. over mm -hmm. 1.45 in a year and a mm -hmm. half. Okay. All right. Keep in mind, however, this El Nino oh, oh, no, was we, not the strongest we, El Nino. This was a right, moderate El Nino. So right, and the neither drop will not be as much. It was 1972 was not the yeah. strongest one either. So, you no, know, it's, it's... No, but no, but you're, you're, you're now comparing a year where there was a very different rate of warming. Oh, you, and, yeah, and, of yeah, course. But that's the whole point. You can talk about models or you can talk about scenarios or you can talk about the past 10 years. But the whole point is that we should look at the data. Right. Well, well, you, we, uh, we no, are, no, wait, let me, let me, let me please finish. So what we do when we look at the data and you know, this data, because you looked at it yourself every day, look at that. Exactly. That's what I mean. You see that the rate of heat uptake has doubled over the past two decades. That's what the NASA data shows. That's what the NOAA data shows. And then if you go back to 1970 and say, okay, if you just use that, that's not that. That's not the, the world we're living anymore. We live in a world where there's much faster heat uptake globally. We have we've seen the past year that there's an increase in how much sunlight is being absorbed. That's what the data shows of 2.3 watts per square, square meter compared to the first decade of this century. And that's all. This heat is already in the system, and that will cause the surface temperatures to keep being elevated and if you and that's what, what dan also says so you you i think it's a good analogy because we have we we put a lot of heaters out there instead of 
because the greenhouse gas force is much higher, as I showed you already, the energy imbalance is much higher. So what, why look at, the, at, 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 a, at the, uh, what the world was 50 years ago, you said talking about 1970, whether at the current data and what we should expect from the data and what we, and then even for example, looking at 2016, that El Nino was less strong, uh, was stronger than now. So maybe we should see less cooling, right? Because the peak was higher, so we should see less cooling than we saw after 2016. I think that's that's. I think that should be our um, assumption when we look at it from a risk perspective. Right, and I, and I would just say that my my definition of the trend is that half the time, I mean, if, if it didn't keep going up, which it is going up, but where we are in time, that you would assume that half the time it's above that trend and half the time it's below, and we know that El Ninos bring you above. We know that La Ninos bring you below. So if you can, if I'm not saying it's a precise exact number, but if you average the two, your uh, El Nino and the next La Nina, which is happening very soon, you, you're going to get a rough idea of what the trend is. The trend is likely in between those two numbers and probably around half half the way between the, not it's not some super precise thing, but I think the focus on using, as Leon was just saying, this long-term data from long ago that doesn't apply anymore, it's like spending time on math rather than really looking at what's actually happening right now. And what's happening right now is different than what happened ten, even so, 10 so, years ago. So, so can I just... Sorry. Yeah, Elliot, go ahead, Elliot. I, I mean, I disagree with both of you. Um, okay. So first of all, 50 years, of course, is not relevant today, but um, you were the one who used, you know, the, the trough of a La Nina to a, you know, after, uh, of a La Nina after an El Nino in your own argument. So I was just saying, based on that argument, a worst case is 1.45C, right? So I'm not, I'm not, you know, if you, if your argument is from a peak of an El Nino to a trough, then 1.45C. Um, the other thing is, but the know, worst I, case is higher, right? I don't understand why you call uh, it the worst case. Well, right. It, it's yeah. Okay. The best case is a 1.45 C. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, that is almost exactly the same as my separate analysis where I did this sort of the decadal. Uh, I, I actually mapped the acceleration so that I could use the data to get that. I mean, it's almost spot on. Um, just okay, so but know, so but, that, but, that's where my confusion was because you call it the worst case, and I think if you call it the best case, so that maybe depends. Yeah, okay. if, you want to, if, if you if you want the things to if you want yeah, to be let one. me <laughs> I'd like yeah let me just finish here. Um, so one point four five C. Um, you know, the world's in bad enough shape that I that even as a doomer, I don't like to exaggerate where we are right now. <laughs> Um, my own research puts us, you know, I don't want to call it research. My own analysis puts us at 1.5 um, in 2027. All of the models, every model, and I know there's arguments against the model, but but has this going over 1.5 between 2027 and the early 2030s, you know? Um, you know, I, I understand the um, confusion around this issue. Um, but I don't think it's such a big point that we it need is, to say is. that my method is the right method and your method is the wrong method. Um, uh, I, I, that's, that's what we started with. It's it's just a global average and it doesn't mean much. Right. Especially to most people. Right. right. I think that's why Hansen keeps using the phrase for all practical purposes. He's I, not I, even I trying to say, I'm yes. telling you exactly what some technical definition is. Look. It's above it then, it's below it then, halfway in between is one point. We're at 1.5, guys, for all practical yeah. purposes. And maybe we all agree on that, but uh, it, it doesn't mean technically. Yeah, it's just so fr I am so profoundly frustrated and have been for a long time that this was not formalized in and around the Paris Accord, you know, that we're doing this guesswork today. Yeah, but otherwise they wouldn't have agreed. 